Hey fam, it's Mariah, and welcome to Calvary Conversations, where we simplify God's Word to reach today's culture by casting down arguments through real, radical testimonies and biblical conversations. Now let's get started. Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is David Catalano, and today I have with me Ashley Sanchez. Hi. And today we're going to be talking about confession and repentance. So we're going to be going through a couple of points, um, hopefully, so that you guys can follow along. Um, but the first verse that we have today is, what is confession? And so we're going to open up with kind of the verse that we're going to be kind of using as the theme of today's um, podcast. So, um, Ashley, do you have First uh, John 1, 6 through 9? I do, and I will be reading it out of the NIV. And it says, if we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar and the word is not in us. Amen. So I think I just want to start out with what is confession, right? And and we're trying to go off of what the Bible says in that scripture. And so, you know, uh, I was studying this and some people think like, hey, you need to confess continually to be saved again. Mm -hmm. So um, they say like, well, if you, uh, there's a saying like Pastor Craig always says, if you fall off a roof cursing and you didn't confess it, then you're going to hell. And we're not saying, uh, we're not saying that today. We're not saying like, hey, you know, yeah. confession is what you need to do to be saved. We believe that if you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you, you've you made that choice to really pursue him and invite him into your heart and um, you've been born again by allowing him into your heart, then you're saved. Um, but I do believe that confession is a huge part of the Christian walk. Yeah. You know, I don't know if you have anything to add to that, Ashley, but. I think it's probably the most crucial part of our walk as believers because I think sometimes we get so used to living our lives and we tell ourselves, oh, it's just, you know, it's a small thing. That was just a small lie. That was just a small, you know, mess up. I didn't, it, it's not as bad as last time, right? And so we, we kind of, we toe the line and then we push that boundary where instead of just relying on the people around us confessing to the lord and saying god help transform me and change me we make this excuse some sometimes and i know i've done done this where i kind of toe the line of like okay well you know i'll confess but you know i need to do some extra things or i need to confess you know more or i need to do something more to prove myself and so there is a biblical way to confess. And I know that we're going to go into that in just a little bit, but I do think it's probably one of the most important parts of being a believer because confession is the whole point of Jesus died for our sins. So when we repent and we let God know that, you know what, I am going to transform my life and give it all to the Lord and leave it under the blood of Jesus. He's going to heal me. He's Amen. going to bring me that re restoration and that strength. Yeah, and I think that goes with the uh, the first point we're going to be talking about, and that's conviction. Mm. And uh, and I love to begin with conviction. I think it's really important that we talk about godly sorrow versus worldly sorrow. So if you want to pull up that verse, I believe it's it's Second Corinthians seven ten. Yeah, and read that. So it says, "Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret, but worldly sorrow brings death." Yeah, and that's the biggest thing I'd, I wanted to start with um, what confession is. And confession, I believe, starts with conviction. You know, um, when we have these moments where we begin to feel this, uh, you know, we, we see what God's will is and we see where we fall short of that or we're going against God's will. That's what conviction is. You know, when I'm in church, sometimes the pastor Craig says a message of, hey, you need to really love your enemies. And then all of a sudden I'm like, I feel this heaviness on my heart or I call it impressions. It's like, mm. I feel this, like something pressing against my heart that something's not right. Yeah. And I begin to recall these moments in my life that I'm like, wow, like there's a lot of moments in my life when I measure it to the word of God that I don't do that correctly. Yeah. 
And I love the idea that there's a big difference between godly sorrow and worldly sorrow in that godly sorrow is actually like saying, man, I hurt God's heart. But I think it's hard because mm-hmm. a lot of Christians can, they, uh, they confuse godly sorrow with worldly sorrow. They're like, oh man, like what if people find out about this or man, I, I, you know, my church isn't happy with me. So I really need to change this about my attitude. And yeah, I think that's something yeah. that um, is really important to start with confection, uh, con, um, confession is we need to make sure that we're doing it out of godly sorrow because we really mm-hmm. care about God's heart and not worldly sorrow. You yeah. know? And that's what I was saying a little bit earlier is that conviction can lead you to do, I think, one of two things. Well, maybe three things. One, it'll push you away from God's throne and from seeking God because you're so ashamed that your own thoughts and the thoughts of the enemy being put in you say you're not worthy of God's mercy and grace. So I'm not going to confess. I'm just going to go back to my old ways. Then you have like that second piece where it's okay, I need to earn God's mercy and God's grace. So I'll confess, but I need to earn it. Then you have then you have that that third part, which is what you were saying, is that you recognize I hurt the Lord's heart. I I've been, you know, like I sinned against him, I saddened him, I grieved his spirit, and I'm going to turn away from my ways and I'm going to live and walk in righteousness. Amen. Amen. And, and I think, like I said, you know, acknowledging, you know, and that goes on to the next point we're going to talk about Mm -hmm. is we want the, we want to acknowledge and confess. And I think that's what godly sorrow starts with. Like you're saying, I think the devil lies to us. Like, why would you confess? That's, you know, I remember uh, when I first came to Christ, I had been living this lie that I was this really good guy and mm. I hadn't done that. I hadn't really done these bad things. I only confessed enough to where I didn't have to look ugly enough to, mm. but I remember, yes, uh, yeah. Yeah. the Lord, you know, he pressed on my heart cause he showed me that verse, you know, first John one, six through nine, this idea, yeah. Hey, you know, if you, you know, you need to confess these sins to be healed. And, uh, I remember when I finally, you know, the, the biggest attack that I got was nobody's ever going to look at you the same. You know, mm. people are going to think you're weird, you know? And so it was so hard. I didn't want to acknowledge them because the moment I acknowledged them, then I had to look ugly for a little bit, Ooh, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, I uh, understand. but we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Cause I believe, you know, with the emphasis on that, when we acknowledge our sins, God is faithful to heal us. You know, that's what that verse also says, right. but it's important because God can't, you know, God, well, not that it can't, but he won't start that healing process until we really begin to confess and acknowledge our sin. Yeah. So the next point we're going to talk about is acknowledge and confess. And so if you want to pull up Leviticus 5, 5, okay. I have a uh, Proverbs 28, 13 that I'll read real quick. It says, uh, I'm going to go NIV with you. It says, whoever conceals their sin does not prosper but the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. Amen. So you want to read Leviticus 5.5? 5, 5? Yeah. Uh, Leviticus 5.5 5 says, When anyone becomes aware that they are guilty in any of these matters, they must confess in what way they have sinned. Amen. Amazing. And so I think that idea is, you know, a lot of people think, you know, we don't have to confess to be saved. But to grow as Christians, we should be acknowledging our faults yeah. and we should be confessing them. And then we're, we should be renouncing them. I know, um, you know, as I'm discipling young men and as a coach, you know, it is so hard to work with someone when they're not willing to acknowledge where they're falling short. Yeah. But yeah. I've seen some of my young men grow the most the moment they finally acknowledge something they need to work right. on. And I think that's something God is always wanting to show us things in our life that we need to acknowledge and put before him so that he can continue to heal us in. Right. And I, and it also reminds me of that verse, you know, um, confess ye to one another, right? I know that that's going to be coming up again. I think it's again. James 5, 16. James 5, 16, where, where it's so important that when you are able to confess to someone else and acknowledge this is what I'm struggling with. This is where I keep slipping up or or falling in my sin. I need that help. It allows the people around you who, you know, we forget that 
the people around us are just like us. Mm-hmm. They've been through it. They've walked through it. They have probably messed up way more than maybe we did. And we think that we're like the worst sinner on the planet, right? Mm-hmm. Because that's how our guilt and our shame feels. But when you confess it, someone usually, at least in my experience, someone will always say, I understand that. I did that. I, I was like that too. But look at how much God changed and transformed my life. So a lot of that confession later on brings the healing and restoration that you need through the washing of the word, but also just knowing that you have that peace of, okay, like my sins have been paid for. They are under the blood of Jesus and I don't have to dwell on them. I just do that 180 and take that correct path. Amen. And I think that goes along with the next topic um, in in the series we're going to talk about. And that is secret, private and public confession. Um, and so I've been reading about revival and, uh, it was really cool cause I saw the, I'm reading a book that David Guzik gave me, mm-hmm. um, it was really good. It's called full of surrender. And he's, you know, he talks about revival and, um, so he talked about these points and he shows. And so I was like, wow, I like this concept. So I looked at what the scriptures say and I found a lot <laughs> of scripture. Yeah. And so we're going to talk, uh, kind of about what each of them are, but I'm going to give you kind of a rundown and then we're going to go over some scriptures, um, that relate to each one. So the idea of secret confession he was saying that, um, you know, depending on what kind of sin it is, depends on what kind of confess- confession, you know. Right, right. Um, so the idea is like secret sins, like there are sins that are in my heart that nobody knows about except God. Uh, just the way I think, my attitude and things like that. And mm-hmm. those are what we call secret sins because people can't really see them. You know, they might be secret, like, but it's important that we take those to God. And I think uh, 2 Corinthians 10, 5 is a good example of that. Yeah. And that says, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient. But we also um, brought up Psalms 51, 2 through 4. And I think this is what more what you were um, speaking on is against you. You only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Amen. And I think that's a huge thing is we need to really start with confessing secret sins Mm. because, you know, he says you're whitewashed tombs because sometimes we can look so good outwardly. Um, You know, as I, as the Lord really freed me from a lot of outward sins that were really easy to see, but the the Lord is still working. I have such ugly sins and the way that I think sometimes, mm-hmm. I even think of like ungratitude. It's mm-hmm. one of the ugliest sins because it's like a form of self-righteousness where yeah, I'm just like, yeah. man, I deserve so much, you know. But I think that there's time that we need to separate, like even Jesus separated himself in the wilderness, yeah. you know. Yeah. I mean, Jesus never sinned. But the idea is we need to take time sometimes to sit before God and acknowledge and confess and give him to give to him these thoughts that we have, these secret thoughts that rule our lives sometimes. And I think, you know, again, I'm not denoting that we should, should uh, not confess to people these secret sins. I'm just Mm -hmm. saying we really need to make sure that we're bringing these secret sins to God first, because I know people who can sometimes take their secret sins and confess it to a person rather than, you know, one thing I really try to do before I talk to people is I really take things before God and I confess and I acknowledge and I really try to work out things with the Holy Spirit. So then whatever he wants me to put into thought to confess to someone, I have it. It's almost passed through my my wonderful counselor first before I bring it to someone else. Because I think God is, he is the wonderful counselor and we should have that intimacy enough with him to where we can share our secret sins with him and acknowledge them before him and really give them to uh, him to change in us. Yeah. And I would say in, in my experience, secret sins or secret, you know, shame, like we may, we may confess to other people and we think that that's the band aid or the cover of, okay, someone knows about it. That Mm -hmm. means God heard it, but we didn't actually surrender it. And I think that that's that, that's the word that, um, that just kind of came to my mind is surrender. When, when you truly confess that, that, that hidden thing or that secret sin to God, you are surrendering and submitting to God. Cause when you can submit it to God, you can submit it to others who can lead you and guide you out of that. Right. Amen. And so instead of just holding on to it and being like, well, God knows all things because 
unfortunately, there are believers that I've met and I still know them where they go, well, God knows all things. He understands. And it's like, well, you're not, you're kind of confessing to me and that's fine. But did you surrender it? Are you going back to the vomit, right? Like, are you the dog going back to its vomit? Like, okay, well, I walked away for a little bit, but I'm just going to come back to it because I still, because something is going on there that is holding us back from fully surrendering or acknowledging that sin. Yeah. And to go along with that, like you were saying, like, just because we confess to someone doesn't mean that we really take ownership of it. Right. You know, I think, um, you know, I've met people that they spend time alone with God, yeah. acknowledging something and they, they haven't. And then I begin to see a change in them. And I'm like, what happened? They're like, yeah. and then they have this whole story about how they spent time with God throughout the weeks, trying to work on something mm-hmm. that nobody knew anything about because it was so like that verse that he's like, God, I've sinned against you and you alone. And God help deal with this. Let's deal with this together because when nobody's around, I still want to be dealing with it, mm-hmm. you know? And yeah. so, I think, again, some people, like you were saying, they can almost like feel like, well, I confessed it to someone, so why do I have to deal with it? Rather than this right. idea of there are things that I think we need to, and I and I share this, you know, there are thoughts and un, ungrateful thoughts and just attitudes and self-righteous yeah. Yeah. ways of thinking that I have that I have to constantly bring before God mm-hmm. yeah. and really, and pride, you know, and just say, God, help me with this and help me with this and really yeah. listen to him to constantly address those. But I think that leads into our next point, and that's private sins. So um, with private sins, do you want to read, I believe it's Matthew 5, 21 through 26? Yes. All right. So starting at verse 21, you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, you shall not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says brother or sister, Raka, is answerable to the court. If anyone who says you fool will be in danger of the fire of hell. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to them, then come and offer your gift. Settle matters quickly with your adversary who is taking you to court. Do it while you are still together on the way, or your adversary may hand you over to the judge, and the judge may hand you over to the officer, and you may be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will not get out until you have paid the last penny. Amen. You know, and I, it's funny. I feel like I, I kind of had a moment like mm. this today where I had to confess some private sins mm. um, or sins privately. Right. So again, what makes them private is the idea that you are confessing only to those who are involved. Right. Right. So I'll use an example. Like, let's say I really, I, I made fun of somebody at work um, or I, you know, maybe I, I confess. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to think of an example. The best example I could think of is like, let's say that I really hurt someone individually in a way that was really embarrassing to them. Yeah. Well, for me to go out and publicly say like, hey, I just want to know, Mary Jane, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry for hooking <laughs> up with you and taking <laughs> advantage of you. It's like, over the PA. <laughs> like, you know, people are going to be like, TMI, like, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and that can be, you know, and, and then I think also too, uh, you know, the other hard yeah. thing is like, all right, Lord, I just confessed this sin to you. And the Lord's like, I know you've confessed it to me, but I think you need to make, I think you need to confess and show, acknowledge that you really did mess up with the people that were involved. And that happened to me today. I, uh, Mm. long story short, I didn't go through the process to reserve a room Mm. and uh, there was a miscommunication. And so essentially two people were really hurt because they were trying to get this room that I had reserved, but I didn't, do the so there was a miscommunication yeah, so yeah. they weren't able to use the room and so like they were like man like you just kind of came in and took the place and and so um you know I was praying and I was like all right lord like man I'm I really I was kind of negligent I didn't follow what I was supposed to do and so but I heard the lord put on my heart and, you know because they were both kind of like upset like man yeah. and uh mm-hmm. the lord kind of put on my heart he said you kind of need to like acknowledge that to mm-hmm. them and let them know that you dropped the ball. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, by doing that, it was kind of like, it is kind of like hard because sometimes Mm. you can say that to someone and they don't respond the way that you'd hope. They're kind of like, well, yeah, of course it was your fault, you know? And you're (laughs) like, why did I, you know? And they may very well say that, right? Like they may very well come at, at you and be like, yeah, we know. (laughs) <laughs> and know. I may have very well deserved it, you know, but, <laughs> yeah. uh, but I think, you know, but I realized like, I think at the end of the day though, like it does really minister to people to go like, wow, like he yeah. messed up and he's integrous enough yeah. to hopefully yeah. admit it to people. And I think, um, when you hurt people privately, like to go back to them, you know, when I first gave my life to Christ, there were some women I really hurt in my life that mm-hmm. I reached out to and I just told them, Hey, I just want you to know that I claim to be a Christian and I did not in any way live what the Bible says. Mm-hmm. And I just wanted to say, I'm sorry for that yeah. and just confess yeah. that to you. Um, yeah. you know, I think that the, the confession of private sins, again, there was my, there was the public confession, confession, which we're going to get to. Yeah. But I think that there are things that are called to go to your brother or sister privately. And I think, Another one is anger. Mm, you know, uh, yeah. there's secret sins. When you begin to develop anger for someone and you begin to develop bitterness for someone, sometimes you can almost like, you know, you take it to God, but then there comes a point where you're beginning to spill that over at that person. Yeah, That's where I think it can go from that secret place of you between you and God to where God says, okay, your anger towards that person is now no longer just between you and me. Now it's spilling out and you're actually doing things to hurt that person. You should right, go one-on-one right. or, you know, go apologize to that person. Yeah, you know, I think yeah, if you're good. a man, sometimes you need to make sure you have mm. another man with you. You're going to apologize, apologize to a woman. You shouldn't go mm. alone with a woman, apologize to her. But, um, just, you know, I yeah. think that that keeps everyone safe. But <laughs> the idea though, is like, there are, are moments where if, there are things and thoughts that are beginning to intrude with the way you treat people. Yeah. You know, if you're like thinking someone's an idiot, I don't think you have to confess that. But if you're like (laughs) thinking they're an idiot and it's beginning to like affect the way you're treating them, then Mm -hmm. I think you do need to like confess to them. Hey, I'm sorry. I, sometimes I don't view you the way that God wants me to view you. And I Mm -hmm. just want to confess that and apologize for that. But imagine like how hard that is. That is a tough pill to swallow. And I will say I I am the first one. Hi, my name is Ashley and I struggle apologizing. I will be the first one to say I don't like to apologize. It is an uncomfortable feeling. But I have gotten to a point in my life where the Holy Spirit doesn't let me sleep. Mm. I cannot go to bed until I have fixed whatever I need to fix. And there was a time where, you know, I had to wake up at 1, 2 a.m. I thought that the problem was done and over with. I thought I had gotten over it, moved on. I forgave her in my heart, right? I thought I did that. And the Lord is like, Ashley, then why are you still talking about it? Why are you still making comments about it? You need to call her or text her and let her know how you feel and that you forgive her, but also that you apologize for slandering her in your heart because that's what I was doing. And it was a big old slice of humble pie. Mm. And I think that's so, so hard is what is what, what you were saying, those internal feelings, those emotions, those, that, that, that problem that was going on and it turns into you sinning or hurting someone and in our own selfishness, sometimes we don't recognize that we hurt someone until, yeah. you know, the Holy Spirit, thank God, convicts us and speaks to us and says, hey, like change this. But then it's also a point of ministry too, where it's like, you know what? David claims that he's saved. Ashley claims that she saved and she actually humbled herself and you humbled yourself and you actually said, you know what? I'm sorry. Like, like I messed up. And Next time I will be more mindful of this process that I, that I need for this room. Right. And so like that speaks to them, Amen. you know, and whether we see the fruits of that or not, like it does, it speaks to them. And, and it sows that seed of like, you know what, there was a guy I met once and he, he actually apologized and said, can you forgive me? I'm sorry. You know? Amen. And so like, I think that's the biggest point too, is that when we hurt others in our sin, and we want and and we need to confess and acknowledge that 
it becomes a point of connection. It becomes a point of ministry, of outreach, even in that little moment where God uses us to show a biblical tenant Amen. of our faith, right? Just living and walking that out. Yeah, and I think to go along with that, like, I think I see it with spouses all the time. You know, a, a husband is so, or a wife is so bothered by what her husband does, mm. and she won't, you know, she harbors these feelings and then never kind of yeah. goes privately to them and says, hey, I just want you to know, like, I'm sorry for hurting you, you know? And I think that can go with us harboring feelings, but also, like, when we hurt someone, like, and again, I one thing I love about Christ is, like, you need Christ is this idea. Yeah. Where when you are when you are acknowledging your sin before someone, like you're doing it before God, yeah, just yeah. to show them, hey, I just want you to know, like I believe in God and I've hurt God by hurting you, mm. and it's it's not this idea. I think a lot of people try to um, apologize, seeking a reaction, and then when they don't get the reaction they wanted, yeah. it becomes a conditional apology. Mm. rather than an unconditional apology where so it's like, yeah. and that's why I love it. Like you, your, your, your confessions start secretly where you're like, God, and then the Lord puts on your heart. I want you to go to that person. And then I know like when I make apologies to people, it doesn't matter. I don't always look for their response. I always look at whether that, that impression that the Lord has put on my heart has been lifted Yeah. to say, yeah. all right, Lord, did I do what your word said to, go and be sincerely uh, sorry and, and for not representing you well to this person. Mm. And when I know that, yeah. all right, you know, this person may still, and I, I, I go, all right, Lord, but I know that I obeyed you and I sought reconciliation. We're going to talk about that in a little bit, but, yeah. um, but that idea that it's, it's more like, I mean, you are really trying to show them like, Hey, you right. really care about them and that you really care that you hurt them because you hurt God's heart. Yeah. At the same time, you also don't want to be trying to make them, or trying to manipulate a reaction of them to like you more or, you know, you know, yeah, for them yeah. to make them forgive you, you know, Hey, okay, look, I, 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 I did this now you need to forgive me back. You know, it's like, yeah, we need that unconditional, you know, but mm -hmm. moving on the next one mm -hmm. is public confession. And it, and it's funny cause I, I think I love public confession, but I think some people actually, they struggle with public confession and then some some yeah. people they rely on public confession confession over other things yeah. and uh so i guess we'll start with the verse you want to read second samuel 12 13. second samuel 12 13 and it says then david said to nathan i have sinned against the lord nathan replied the lord has taken away your sin you are not going to die and so that's an example. They say that when David, you know, wrote Psalms 51, mm -hmm. but he confessed his sin to the nation, yeah. they believed, mm -hmm. you know. And so um, that's an example of a very public admission of sin, you know, acknowledgement yeah. of sin. And I think it's important, you know, when I came to Christ, I thought of how, I, how badly I misrepresented Christ. And so mm -hmm. when I came out publicly, and I still come out publicly, before I found Christ, uh, six and a half years ago about, I, I lived in sexual immorality. I, mm -hmm. I drank all the time. I, I partied and I lied and I was a very wicked man. And, and I share that publicly because I don't want anyone ever to think that the man I was six and a half years ago that claimed to be a Christian was a Christian, that I was representing Christ. I want to acknowledge my sin so that I can show people, Hey, I was not a Christian. And then I also want to just yeah. acknowledge publicly that I still fall short in pride. I still fall short in self-righteousness and I still fall mm -hmm. short in, in loving people. And I, and I share that so that when people try to throw mud at me to say, you're not a good Christian, mm -hmm. it's already confessed that, Hey, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm by the grace and strength of God, I'm wanting to be the best Christian I can be but I don't confess or hold myself to a standard. I admit right. publicly that I'm not the best Christian. And especially when we mess up publicly, like yeah. King David, where he's like, wow, if he had continued to hide that and people had found out about that under the table, yeah. they would have had a distaste towards God because, you know, and I think uh, that's why I think like, I don't want people to have a distaste towards God yeah. because I'm pretending like I'm a sinless man you know, but if I admit like, Hey, I'm an imperfect person who needs Christ yeah. and I'm, I'm, I'm striving to move forward every day. Then I think people yeah. can see, 
wow, it's God's grace in him, not because he's a great man or anything like that. Yeah. You know? I think by nature we are wretched, right? Like our hearts are deceptively wicked. You know, we can't know it. God can know it, right? Like God knows our hearts because he sees it. But I think the hardest part, I think, of public confession is that sometimes people take it too far sometimes like for you in your case and I loved how how you explained it is that you never deny like the old man that you were yeah you face it head on and you say okay like I'm trying to kill this part of this flesh daily and Amen. give it to the Lord so that I can show others not only did I change but look at how I try to maintain that transformation in my life. Sometimes people will take it to the whole other thing and they will confess every little thing because it makes them feel better, not because there is this internal change or transformation that they feel they need to be have. They lack this recognition mm-hmm. of, okay, like I like Ashley, like you got a problem, girl, like you need to fix that, right? A lot of times people do don't have that self-awareness and I think you get that self-awareness through the Holy Spirit through reading the word and being like okay does my life match up with the word does my life match up with the Bible and I like how you said you know what like it was a lot like Paul you know Paul's like I am the chief amongst sinners but he said you know I have grace that has been poured upon me and I will use this grace and I will use my gift and whatever God wants me me to do for his kingdom even unto the point of death right like like Paul knew that he was gonna die but he lived and walked in this pursuit of I'm not going to go back to that old man and I'm sure he was angry at a lot of these churches and I know that we're doing this in church, right? Like going through like acts and like the new Testament and we're like, Paul was not always happy with the church sometimes. And he was like, what are you guys doing half the time? Why are we going back to these old ways? Why are we going back to these old sins? Like who's deceived you? Why do you guys keep doing these things? And so I really like the fact that you were just so honest and, and open right now. But I think I want to like take it to the other side is that people will take it way too far. They will confess way too much. And it's just like, whoa, dude, like, thank you for telling us what God brought you from. But what what's the purpose of this? And I think that goes along with, yeah, so to continue on the idea of public's, uh, public mm-hmm. confession, is the idea of it's a I believe it's just a continual in minutes, but like really emphasizing that, hey, I fall short of the glory of God. Because yeah, there are people, yeah. I mean, that that it, it's like it's like pulling teeth for them to admit that they don't measure <laughs> up to what God's worth. Oh, I'm a great person. I'm so happy. Yeah. You know, but I think yeah. public confession, like I see Pastor Craig do that on the podium sometimes, and that mm-hmm. has really ministered to my heart many yeah, times. Amen. When I go, man, like Pastor Craig struggles really wanting to be a man of God. And he's willing yeah. to acknowledge that and show that he really wants to change. Yeah. And like, like, uh, you know, in that Psalms 51, David mm-hmm. says, you know, teach me so I can teach transgressors your ways. You know, he acknowledged God, yeah. I, I, I fell short, but help fix this in my life, help change me. That's such a word, yeah. But I think what you were saying is uh, the idea of where people confess too much. That gets along the lines of where I think sometimes we confess in the wrong er- arenas. Yeah. Right. So the idea is sometimes we confess what should just be private sins to the public, (laughs) you know, (laughs) Hey, uh, I just want to say, uh, you know, Jenny, I'm sorry for hooking up with you and your sister last night. You know what I mean? Like, (laughs) it's like, uh, okay, (laughs) maybe you shouldn't, you know what I mean? Or, or the idea that like, sometimes we, Mm -hmm. instead of taking things, that's why I love confessing secret sins first. I think we should always (laughs) confess things to God first Amen. because, you know, but I think sometimes people just confess for psychological relief. You know, we go up there, I confess, oh man, I feel so much better that I just confess things, but I, you know, it just feels better to confess them, but I don't and, really have a plan to change. But your church is literally like, yeah, 
like, you know, why but, but, did we just, what did we hear? Yeah. You know, and like, sometimes, I mean, like sometimes like there's private sins, there's, there's yeah. secret sins you shouldn't right. confess privately. Hey, I just want you to know, I really wanted to punch you in the face right now, but, uh, but you know what I mean? Like <laughs> the Holy Spirit stops me. The, you know what I mean? Like there, there are things that I think that we can keep between us and God. You know, right, I think right, if right. I shared every secret thought that I have, like, you know, people would think I'm crazy. You know, I, I think, think that we're both I mean, crazy. I, I hope have, I'm not the only one. Like people are like, yeah, I don't want to, <laughs> if I had to confess every secret thought, you know? Yeah. But I think, um, and again, I think, yeah, like there's things that we take, you know, that should be only confessed privately that, you know, or there's things that we should be confessing publicly that we're like, oh, I'm too afraid to confess that publicly. I don't want to look that bad. So I'll just confess yeah. to God or I'll just confess to a certain amount of people. Thank you for watching part one of Confessions and Repentance. Tune in next week for the rest of the podcast. Um, but if you haven't already, please make sure to like and subscribe and share this video. If you'd like to listen wherever you get your podcast, you can just type in Calvary Conversations. You can also follow us on Instagram behind the scenes at Calvary Conversations. Also, this is a listener supported podcast. So if you'd like to donate to the podcast, you can do so by going to the description below and clicking donate. Thanks so much, guys, and God bless. Mm -hmm.